Happy birthday, Miss Carol Parks. Happy, happy birthday to you, to the most precious little lady in the world. And we happen to have a photo of her here in the studio with her sweet husband and that crazy, wild, and wicked Mr. Ella J as they visited with us live on the set. And he loved having them here absolutely two of the kindest, sweetest, amazing people Gilmer County or the whole world ever saw. So happy, happy birthday to precious, precious Carol. I'm not going to say how old she is. I'll just say she's older than 59. So there you go. There you go. April is a very special month with a lot of birthdays. My grandmother's birthday is April the 29th. My, um, my dear amazing idol of racing Dale Earnhardt's birthday was April 29th and there are several other birthdays that we're going to be talking about but I have to tell you about a really cool car cruise that's going to happen here in Ella J and guess who the DJ is going to be Mr. Ella J guess what kind of music you're going to hear good rocking riding in them big hot rod cars the sad thing is he can't have candy cane there because he can't he can't haul equipment in candy cane and he's going to be DJ and so all his equipment will have to be brought from the studio and he will be blasting that music of course let me tell you something I've learned being around a musical maniac you don't turn it up but so loud because then the decimals and the it screws it up and you just don't do that and he fusses if you turn it up too loud you just leave it where it's supposed to be so the music will be perfect the fun will be had and this is going to be on april the 14th beginning at 5 p.m at pools barbecue on at pig hill so come and bring your hot rods bring your cars bring your positive attitude, and it's just a cruise in, um, no awards or anything like that, it's not a car show, it's just a cruise in, and he's going to be there, and I think it's going to be a lot of fun, because a lot of y'all are saying, we really want to see him, we really miss him, we, you know, but I'm playing his music, what more do y'all want? I will tell you, last night we got a big update on, and, uh, he is making Smoky Mountain Memories, and he is making progress. Only two more instruments go into the mix, and then it's ready for mastering. So he's getting excited. He says it's tight, it's right, and it's good. And he is happy, happy, happy. So I hope that y'all will go out and uh, go visit with him a little bit because, you know, he got used to being here and he misses it, but he is in the studio like 24-7. He is mastering 16 songs, so he is really working to put out a good product that y'all will all love, and uh, that's why he's not here. But anyway, okay, today is a day that we're going to remember. We're going to remember ball ground as it used to be. Um, we're going to remember people that we love that are no longer here. Um, gosh, I hate I hate when those goodbyes happen. When I lost my grandmother, um, I was 40 years old and I had a really, really tough time with it because she was my everything and she was somebody I depended on. Well, sadly, the Brackett family lost their leader. Um, Eddie Brackett was a wonderful man. You can't talk to anybody in ball ground who doesn't have anything kind to say about Eddie Brackett. Hardworking, um, he just, he loved life, he loved people. He was always smiling, never left that home without a hug. He was just a good, good person. And today we are going to honor him. Um, we're doing it this way because we're getting some new equipment next week and things are going to change a little bit. And i got to get it done while I can get it done. So the equipment coming in may change things up quite a bit. So we'll see. It's going to mean that we have to do things with flash drives and all this stuff that I'm not used to doing because I'm used to DVDs. You know, I'm kind of that old school stuff. But, but we're going to share this. Jenny Byers asked me if I would go with her and do some interviews. And um, we did this one several years ago. And I'm so thankful that we got it because um, as he celebrates his heavenly birthday, he's not with us anymore, but the memories certainly are. The home that he was in was part of downtown ball ground at one time, and his grandfather owned the, home, owned the building in town, took it apart, dismantled it, took it down there, and built the home that they lived in since 1965. This home is about to be restored, and I hope that there's a way they can expose some of the old lumber and get to see 
the things of the past, the truly the things of the past, it's going to be really, really cool. So I'm, I'm encouraged and I'm looking forward to seeing just what's in there that they can say, man, this is from the 1800s. That'll be really, really awesome. So we're going to go to, this is a very, very special day. Um, it was dark in there and uh, but it was, it was precious to hear these words. And you're gonna hear a little bit about Ball Ground, about Calvin Farmer. That was his granddad. And if you've visited Ball Ground lately, you've seen the murals that are up. You have seen the amazing talent of the girls from the University of Georgia. And I hope you will come and visit. I hope you'll go visit Calvin Farmer Park. And more than that, I hope you'll visit Farmer's Crossing because Farmer's Crossing, we're about to add about 70 houses real quickly and you can be a part of that. You can be a part of the community in Ball Ground where you can walk to town. You can walk anywhere you want to go from the tennis courts to the restaurants to the shopping um, to the baseball field. It's going to be amazing to see all of this come together. So I wish that he could be here to see it, but um, we can remember him and that's exactly what we're going to do today. Together. How about let's do this okay. one together? All right. Okay. Um, I'm joining Miss Jenny Byers, who has been here interviewing um, somebody that we absolutely adore, Eddie Brackett, or as we call him, Dad. And um, in the 10 years I've been around this family, um, his, his heart, his love for his family is so very, very obvious. And the one thing that I love is he never forgets anything, and he's always shared stories with us. And I want him to tell us a little bit about the trip that he used to make from Ball Ground with his granddad over to what I would call the bottoms on Yellow Creek Road. Now, Sometimes make it about two hours and ten minutes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And those memories were from what year? From 40, 48 to 52. Mm -hmm. And as a kid, you got to see things that the children today will never get to see. How many kids ever got to ride in a wagon with their granddad? You know, you have experienced things that it's even hard to tell kids about today. Well, I, I couldn't tell you about it. Your grandfather brought electricity to this town. That's amazing. How many kids even think what it's like to live without electricity? And and you saw electricity come to town, you know, as a kid when, when you got your first TV when you got the first telephone, you know, that's something we haven't talked about. Do you remember when you got your first telephone in a house? I'm thinking that was in the 50s. Isn't that crazy? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and now everybody has a cell phone. Even David Byers has got a cell phone. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is such a different world, and, and, and we are missing the things that your world had because you had just a playtime, peace time, it's only Family about two time. Three years older than I am. Yeah, yeah. So we'll do you next. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I look across the field here from your house. You know, the the beautiful rock wall where the goats were, and the goats would always play right across the street where your goats were. What do you remember about that that rock wall and it being built? Who built that? Well, my grandpa built all three of them. It's so beautiful, three, Jenny. It's beautiful. Three rock walls. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. It's to keep the bottom from washing away. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he knew that he would have to do that to stop the water flow. And it's just, it's its amazing. I've taken so many pictures of those rock walls, and I just, I've always been fascinated by them because I said it was ingenuity before you had an engineer to tell you that you needed to stop the water. You know, it was it's just such a different thing. But he was so very, very smart. Now, let's go back to the house and the barn because... When that barn came down, a lot of sadness, a lot of tears over that barn coming down. What memories do you have of the old Calvin Farmer barn? Well, I, we used to milk down there. That's the reason when we left the river farm, mm -hmm. about 3 o'clock, he said it's time to go, 3 o'clock in the evening. We'd come and head back because it'd be milking time about 7 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And then didn't he have a blacksmith shop there too? Right above the barn was another shed that he had a blacksmith shop. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So he was smart enough to know that in order to be a farmer, he had to take care of things himself. He had to do the crops. 
He had to milk his cows. He had to make tend, you know, he had to tend the fields even when it wasn't time to plant to prepare him for the next planting. And then he raised some cattle too, didn't he? Oh yeah, about, well, the most there's ever been in three bottoms, I think it was 30 head, mm -hmm. 30 or 31. And you know, today that would be worth what, 35, $36,000. What do you think a head of cattle was worth then? At that time, I don't know, between eight and probably thousand dollars a piece. Each one of them. Now, out of all the things you learned from your granddaddy, did he teach you to respect and learn to love working with timber? Because you spent so many years working with the Harris guys and, and supplying them with lumber. Did that come from your granddad? Is that why you were involved in it? Or didn't your daddy have something to do with that? Well, I just, I just fell into it. I come from one thing to another to another. Mm -hmm. Puff wood, to logging, and then wound up in sawmill. Mm -hmm. And you love that sawmill, didn't you? Yeah, I, I liked it. Yeah, yeah. And you had I a lot of... It. I missed it for about a year or two there, too. Right. Can we talk a little bit about your life-altering experience? You had a massive heart attack, and by the grace of God, you're still here. Um, it was very scary. Weren't you across the street at the sawmill when this happened? No. Where were you? I'd got up in the morning fixing to go to work that morning. Okay. When it come on me. Okay. And uh, I told my wife to call 911 because I know something was wrong. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And probably in, within an hour after I noticed something was wrong, I was in the hospital. Right where you spent weeks at the hospital. Five weeks. Yes, yes. Yeah, walking miracle. I mean, we look at you every day and we're just so blessed that you're still here, so. Now, out of the things that we've talked about with the past, the, the Calvin Farmer house, the Aunt Mandy's house, the barn, um, the train, let's talk a little bit about the train. When's the last time you remember seeing that train on those tracks? You talking about the Amco Railroad? Mm-hmm. Well, I never did see the train on the You didn't? Because it went down in 04. Okay. But you heard about it from your granddad. Okay. Is there still a train bed there? Mm-hmm. Some, the, some of the rails maybe mm -hmm. still over there? Mm -hmm. Brady's dug up some of them. Yeah. Where, I, where I plant the garden in the bottom down there, or did a year or two ago, uh, the plow picked up uh, some of the spikes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I picked up, I don't know, three or four of them out of the garden down there. Yeah. Because yeah. it was right there on the railroad bed. Yeah, that's amazing to me, to see ball ground as it is today and after hearing y'all talk about the different things. and Now, can we go back to Zona Lee? Because um, your mom was truly a miracle. Um, her twin died at birth, and her mom died. So... Do you remember the stories of her amazing life? I mean, she was tiny, wasn't she? Well, yeah, she she had to be she had to be nursed with the Aunt Lolly. Mm-hmm. Uh, In order for her to survive, because right. her mom died at birth. That's yeah, right. yeah, yeah. And that's not very common today. Mothers don't usually die at birth, but. But her mom died and her twin died. And what year was that that your mom was born? 1918. 1918, yeah. Things have changed a lot with medical care and with, with birth and babies since 1918. A whole lot. A whole lot. Now, was her mom a little bit of Indian? Did she have Cherokee? She looked very much like Cherokee. Did she have Cherokee in her? My mom was... Mother? Biological mother. I'm thinking so. She looked like it, didn't she? Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful lady. And, and Zona Lee is just amazingly beautiful. Now let's talk about the next family because Zona Lee also has the Haynes children. And um, her, greatest, her greatest thing in life, I think, was being a mom, wasn't it? She loved her kids. Oh, yeah. She yeah. loved her kids, and it showed. It showed. You know, when you go to the church and you see her monument... It represents her children, and that's all she wanted on there was her children. That says a lot for your mama, doesn't it? Yeah. 
And growing up, she enjoyed being a basketball player too, didn't she? She loved ba ba yeah, loved basketball. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and Sue too built for it. You know, they're both tall and and built for that basketball thing. It's it's amazing. When we look at the history of the Brackets and the Haynes family, and and really and truly, it's you know it it hasn't been that long, but it seems like forever ago. Mm -hmm. It seems like forever mm -hmm. ago. Because the house is gone now, and um, thankfully Shorty's house is still in really good shape, isn't it? What year do you think it was built? Now that I couldn't tell you. Do you think it was older? It was older than this house, the one that burned. It, pr it probably was. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Because that was your uncle and aunt's house, wasn't mm -hmm. it? When you moved there, I mean, you moved there, you said to take care of the aunt. Mm -hmm. So the house was already probably well, older. It was, it was my grandpa's daddy's house. Ooh. Uh -huh. So you know, yeah. Or, so 1800s. Uh -huh. Yeah. Do you think there are any more houses in town that were built in the 1800s? Do y'all think there are? I can't think of them. Well, I'm sure there are. Down the Quarles house down at Dover was there in the Civil War. Wow, wow. That's what my mom said. Yeah, yeah. And of course, it, the Roberts house. Mm hmm. It's amazing the history that's in this tiny town in like a two and a half mile circle. You know, it's just, it's crazy. And I think we're missing out on it because we need a historical museum for people to come and visit and to see the pictures of the old houses and to see the things that, you know, even spikes dug up from the railroad, mm -hmm. things like that. Mm -hmm. Oh, that reminds me, Eddie, did you ever go over in uh, Amos Wilson's fields by the river and gather any arrowheads? No, I never did. I never did, did go over. Uh -huh. Did you ever find any arrowheads around here? I picked up one or two in the uh, where I had the sawmill over here, across the road. Mm -hmm. So there's proof that the Indians. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah. Where you where the you run around with a loader picking up logs and then it rained, you mm -hmm. would pick up something like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you have any idea how many feet of board you cut in a sawmill in the years you were there? What would you guess? Well, I don't know, but without a edger, it wasn't too much going on. Probably, probably most over here was 1,800 1, board feet a day. A day. <coughs> And today, do people, what do people do with sawmills today? I, I was always told, uh, that boys uptown said, or some of them said, you ought to get edger. Well, that calls for more hands. I just mm -hmm. didn't want to go that way. Yeah, yeah. So it only took, it only took two over here for the mill. Mm -hmm. Can we talk about somebody that you lost last year? Didn't you lose your dear friend, Cotton Bozeman? Yeah. You've lost a lot of friends lately. Cotton, he'd come by to see me about every couple of, couple of weeks. Yeah, yeah. And y'all would be sitting on the porch. On the porch, and sometimes he'd have to go to Canton. I'd drive down, yeah. sometimes drive down for him. Yeah, yeah. Got to do a lot of reminiscing. Yeah, mm -hmm. he'd have to go maybe to the grocery store. Mm -hmm. I tell you somebody else I know you miss, um, Frank Farmer, because he would come and see you, and y'all would go to Dixie to the races, wouldn't you? He liked the races good or better than I did. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. He was a good man, yeah. And he died suddenly and pretty young. He was pretty young, so, yeah, and I know you miss him. Thank you, Frank was 72. That young. That's real young. <laughs> that young, isn't it, David? <laughs> yeah, that young. <laughs> That young. Now, when you look back on all the things you've been able to share with your children, what are some of your favorite memories that you've passed along to your kids? Because they love hearing the stories of your life. And I know one of my favorite things to hear about you was the idea that you left Ball Ground and you went on that gorge bridge. That just blew my mind. I want you to Google it when you get home. Okay. It is amazing. Have you ever seen that bridge? It's terrifying, and he took his family. What kind of car did you go in? Well, it was a 76 Monte Carlo. A 76 Monte Carlo loaded up with all the brackets, headed across a bridge that was 
I mean, it just, it blows my mind. It just, when you look at that gorge, there's no way I'd go across that bridge. <laughs> You're a brave man, Eddie. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> what made you want to go to the Capitol in Washington, D.C.? Because we was already in the Shenandoah Valley of Virginia. Mm-hmm. And um, went through the flower guards of the Shenandoah, and then after I pulled out, I happened to see a sign of six. Uh, 68 miles to Washington, D.C. And got up there and I said, Lord, what I've got into. <laughs> five ways going one way and five on the other side. Oh, my gosh. i never seen many, much lanes. And, yeah. And that was about 20 miles this side of Washington, D.C. But we went in and, and pulled on in there toward the Washington, Washington Monument. Wow. And walked up the the far away to the capital, and that was that seemed like three quarters of a mile, yeah. Of a mile. Yeah, and you know today you can't even park near there because there've been so many terrorist attacks. You can't even get near it now. You have to park away from there, and it's just so different. So, but do you remember what it was like to see that capital and to see the magnitude of it? We went in the rotunda. Wow! Wow! Uh, to, uh, Two or three rooms at least. Yeah, yeah. How many kids in the 70s got to do that? I mean, that's amazing that you did that for your family. Well, I just, I'm, I'm just glad I got to carry my oil up. Yeah, that is awesome. That is awesome. I've always wanted to go during cherry blossom time when I, they're all blooming, the trees are blooming, and the pink blooms, and that's been when I've always wanted to go to Washington. Mm -hmm. but. I've been there one time when they were blooming. Mm -hmm. It's very pretty. Is there anywhere that you've always wanted to go that you never got to go? Do you think about one place you'd like to have seen? Well, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe Alaska. Alaska. <laughs> but I don't want to fly out. <laughs> I'm going to drive out. Yeah. Well, I, I would love to talk Freddie into driving you to Alaska because I know we brought you some video and some pictures and you were really, you loved it. And I know what it's like as a kid. I always wanted to go to Alaska. And once I got there, I wanted to live in Alaska. I mean, I absolutely fell in love with it. So maybe one day he'll drive you to Alaska. Think we can work that out? Maybe. Right. Maybe. Would, would you go, Eddie? Yes. Would you go to Alaska if they would carry you? I guess as long as I'm in automobile. <laughs> <laughs> as long as you're not on a plane. <laughs> I know if your wife said she didn't let you want to go. <laughs> I have sat in a plane, but I've never been up. You've never been on a plane. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's you don't amazing. think you would want to be? Don't think you'd want to fly? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. It's really simple once you get in the air and they close the door. I'm a, I'm not a good flyer, even though I've flown to Alaska tons of times. I'm like a white knuckle flyer. I hold on and I'm just like, oh. <clears throat> but once you get up there, it's okay and it's pretty fast. So maybe, you know, maybe we could talk you into it. But Freddie's like you. He did not like flying. <laughs> that was not his favorite thing. So, so. Well, Denny, is there anything else we need to talk to him about? Not unless there's something special he'd like to tell us. Any good memories of anything? <clears throat> Eddie, tell them about your convertible. The red convertible with a different interior. Well, yeah, I kept kept looking at this 41 Ford up at the, up at the Hubbard Harden garage up here, or store. I could go up there and get me an RC Cola and a pack of peanuts and go back down the railroad and think about that 41 Ford sitting in the <laughs> garage up there. And the color of it. Well, it was, I was going to say it was orange. <laughs> and the interior was what? Leopard skin. Leopard. <laughs> no, I just cannot imagine that. <clears throat> Eddie in that car. Oh, that's wild. Did you drive a little bit fast? No. Okay. I probably the speed limit, 50, 55. There might have been a time or two I got above the limit. Yeah. Most, most <coughs> no, Eddie was one of the best guys in town. He never did anything. Crazy, you know. Yeah, like some, like some of you old guys did. Yeah. <laughs> you were 
weren't as wild as David Byers, were you? <laughs> uh, David, he, he, David wasn't wild either. <laughs> well, good. Y'all yeah. were the sensible ones that didn't drink, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know, when you look back on your family history, I know that um, your granddad is buried over at, what's that church, Bethesda? Bethesda. Yeah, and then your, your mom's buried up here at the church, and then you mentioned Hightower. Are there relatives buried over at Hightower, too? Well, not that I know of. I just remember going a couple of years to... Church there. Church about twice a month. Yeah. On, Two Sundays out of the month, we'd go to Hightower. Mm -hmm. When we lived out of during World War II, in 40, 40 probably 42 and 43. Mm -hmm. And the day before yesterday, I was actually in Alpharetta, and I went by where the brackets are buried at the cemetery. Well, that's, <coughs> that's where my grandpa, grandpa, and my daddy buried at. Mm -hmm. they go, uh, right in downtown Alpharetta. Yeah. So the brackets were from that area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they lived at Free Home. Didn't you go to school a tiny short amount of time in Free Home? Not in Free Home, in Crab Apple. I started school in Free Home. And uh, one year, seemed like I went one year in Crab Apple. Mm -hmm. We did move from Free Home to Crab Apple for about a year. Mm -hmm. And then back to Ball Ground. And the rest of your life has been right here in Ball Ground. Yeah. Yeah. Can you think of a better place to have grown up and raised your family? No. It's a good place. It's a good place. Yeah. Still full of a lot of good people. A lot of good people. You know, you were talking about the Harris Lumber Company <clears throat> and what a staple what they were for this community. Because you build a house, you go to Harris Lumber Company. You know, you got to have the wood, and uh, it, it was a big deal. So they kept you working for a long time, didn't they? Five days a week. Mm -hmm. Up to 209, 210, mm -hmm. when things started slowing down. Right. Everything started slowing down. <coughs> Boy, didn't it? We I remember that. I started the mill up in 83, and everything, I could, I could go five days a week. And then... When it come uh, 10, 11, 12, and things were getting slow, mm -hmm. we were just getting to it a couple hours uh, a day for mm -hmm. about three days a week, and that was it. Yeah, yeah. It made a, it made a big difference in small business and large business. The, when the economy failed, it really failed. <clears throat> and small businessmen like you took a hard hit. That was hard to go from five days a week to a couple of days a week. So what year did you close the, your... Your mill, your sawmill, been several years now. It was uh, 13 when I had the heart attack. Uh -huh. That's when I, uh, so you closed it In May of, no, of 13. But I can tell you if it had been up to him, he'd have gone right back to it. <laughs> but the doctor said no. <laughs> well, I had the skids loaded that morning. I had it uh, to go to work. Mm-hmm. It hit me after I got up. It, it hit me so I, I had to go south to the mm -hmm. cross the road. Right, mm -hmm. and you know work ethics today are different because most people would say, "Okay, I don't have to go back to work now." He wanted to go back to work because work's all he knew. You know, mm -hmm. he'd worked all his life. So well, you enjoyed working, didn't you? And enjoyed what you're doing. They say if you get something, if you work at something that you do, that you enjoy, then you don't have to work the rest of your life because you're really not, it's not like work. You're enjoying it. Yeah, I, I enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. And you going to tell them about your pet black snake that was over there for years? Yeah, I had a, about a five or six foot black snake. That I'd be throwing bark across the carriage in a pile. I had a pile about three or four foot high. Uh -huh. And that, that black snake would come up through the pile. <laughs> and, uh, as the carriage went back and forth, it it turned his head and watched that carriage go back and forth. <laughs> it amazed me. Uh -huh. Made uh, you feel good though that there would, wouldn't be poisonous snakes around with that black snake around. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Reckon he wonders where you went. Where did my buddy go? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I'm thinking Hit went down to the bottom down there to yeah. the Coco bus and sitting down there. Yeah, yeah. Because I 
It could have been another one, but I seen one down there that sort of looked like it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's interesting. A lot of great memories. A well, lot of great memories. Well, thank you so much, uh, Eddie, for letting us interview you today and, and learn more about you and what it was like growing up in, in when you were young and, and your good memories. Thank you for sharing those with us today. Well, appreciate y'all coming. Well, thank you so much. Now, where's Loretta's chocolate cake? <laughs>
375-0590 or Evelyn Calhoun at 770-733-0779. Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece or just making memories, writing a great American novel or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow, whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back, and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection-based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds, and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation, 770-345-2000, or go online to georgiamtc.com. Hi, I'm Ryan Blaney, a third generation race car driver. And we dedicate a lot of our time to going as fast as possible. But when my grandpa was diagnosed with Alzheimer's, it was a very unexpected bump in the road for us. It's important to notice if older family members are acting differently, experiencing problems with their memory, or having trouble with routine tasks. Early detection of Alzheimer's can give your family time to explore support services, make a plan for the future, and access available treatments. If you or your family are noticing changes, it could be Alzheimer's. Talk about seeing a doctor together. That beautiful mountain scene that you just saw is compliments of our drone and Tim. Tim and Miss Bree are at the hospital right now waiting on a tiny, tiny baby to arrive. And we hope that this baby arrives healthy and happy and smiling and maybe screaming a little bit when she comes out. But uh, we will update you as soon as we know any news. But Tim is excited. We're all excited. We can't wait to see what her name is because they're still talking about it. So... You know, this weekend I was lucky enough to be in the uh, community building down in Ball Ground, and at that time we were thinking about things that have happened there in the past. And one of the things that happened many, many years ago, they did fundraisers all the time, they had fun times, and they did a show. And in that show was Miss Laura Mae Mitchell, Miss Carol Goforth, and Miss Shirley Prater. And we have a song that Shirley wrote and performed. And I don't know if she did it that night or not, but we're going to share that with you because when we're looking back, we're looking way, way back. Not as far back as Eddie Brackett's granddad went, but we're looking way back. And I think this is a piece of what we miss the most about the past. We had those 45s. We had those little bitty record players. Now everything is automated. It drives me crazy. The, the 65 Dodge that you just got to see going board town, that's when cars were really, really cars. Is it? No, it's 66. Sorry, 66. But that's when cars were really cars. That's when things were fun. So I want to remind you about the car cruise that is going to be on April the 14th at 5 p.m. over at Pools Barbecue. And yes, Mr. Ella J is going to be your DJ. He is going to be your fun master. And he will make you laugh. He will make you giggle. And if you're lucky, he will imitate some people that I've seen him imitate. And oh my gosh, can he nail it. So y'all be good. And maybe he'll do some stuff for y'all. But again, April the 14th, and it begins at 5 o'clock, just to cruise in, bring your car, start your car out on board town that afternoon and go make that trip that we made. That was a wonderful trip and a really cool car, and I can guarantee you it doesn't sound any better than when you romp down on it on board town. Don't speed, though. Just romp down on it. All right, y'all. We're going to go to Shirley Faye's music, and then we're going to share something that's one of my favorite programs ever, and I'm thankful to Fred Wyndham for producing it. Yes, I'm a hard 
freshly mown. Look in through the screen door, the aroma draws you in to the heart of the home where old memories begin. The heart of the home keeps calling you in. Sherry's in the kitchen, cooking with her friends, sharing recipes together, stories and songs, making new memories the heart of the home. Welcome to Heart of the Home. Once again, we are in beautiful, beautiful Fannin County, Georgia. Today's program is going to be about friends and helping other friends. Um, each of us today have been a caregiver to someone who possibly battles cancer. We're going to talk a little bit about that. We're going to talk about what you can do to help somebody in a situation that you hope you never find yourself in. My guests today, Freddie Brackett, my daughter Angela Burgess, and Pam McRae, have all been faced with the same problem. Mm -hmm. Freddie, you dealt with your brother Ronnie, yeah, who died of cancer after how many months? Uh, about a year and a half. About a year and a half. At age 48. 48. Now, what kind of cancer did Ronnie have? It was stomach and esophagus. Right. Mm -hmm. Angela, you to help take care of mom. Mm -hmm. She lasted two years? Yeah. About two years. Pam, every day you see somebody mm -hmm. that you cook for, that you help. Every single person here has been affected by cancer. Right. And you decided to do this program to help caregivers. Exactly. Those are the people, when you took care of Ronnie, did you feel a little pressure because you, you wanted to be there? You, you didn't feel like you could leave. It's important to spend the extra time with them. Yeah. But then sometimes you get to feeling a little bit down. I know I did. Mm -hmm. when, after 11 months and three weeks of taking mm -hmm. care of my late husband and my mother, I got really depressed, mm -hmm. and, and I needed something to cheer me up. Mm -hmm. Now, Pam, you've come up with a great idea for cheering up somebody. Well, I'd like to take full credit for it, but I can't. Um, one day I was a little bit down, feeling a little bit blue, and Mary Hopkins brought a little gift in to me, and we'll show you that later on in this segment, about mm -hmm. a little box of cheer, she called it. And it really worked, and it raised my spirits. So when you and I were discussing Heart of the Home, what better person to observe today in honor is the caregiver because mm -hmm. they get forgotten, just mm -hmm. like you said. That's true. You want to talk about what we're doing for them today? We do. One thing we want to talk about is um, sometimes I get really, not tired, but down just mm -hmm. a little bit. And when I get quiet, you always say, what's wrong? If I get quiet, you think something's wrong. Yeah. Sometimes I get thoughtful and I think about things and I, get, I do get a little bit down. I have found the best way to stay positive and stay focused is to think about somebody else. Mm -hmm. To think about somebody else and something small you can do for that. Your mom is a great person to bake cookies for somebody. Do a little something yeah, for somebody. Yeah. Now your Aunt Betty is facing cancer right now. And um, her husband has been instrumental in getting her through this, hadn't he? Yes, he has. He's a great, great guy yeah. and together they're going to conquer this. But everybody needs a little positive somebody coming into your life. And, and today we're going to show little things you can do for that caregiver. Just a mm -hmm. little something. It doesn't have to be a big deal. Tell me about the pear preserves you got on North Georgia now today. I know. <coughs> um, I've been really sick with a bug for a week. Well, so, and I actually lost 10 pounds in a week, week and a half. So mm -hmm. I know I was very sick. But these pear preserves have been on my mind for a while. Uh -huh. And you know, sometimes you just, you, you get to thinking about a food and you want it because of the texture, uh -huh. the flavor, and I love the grittiness of the pear and the sweet. And I got His surprised mom. with Freddie's mama made pear preserves and sent them. And that was my little treat, mm -hmm. you know, that I got to eat and actually kept it down and was very happy because right. that was just, that's a homemade gift. And just a little, cannot, yeah, mm -hmm. a little you know, gesture. For nothing, yeah. Mm -hmm. A little gesture. And, and matter of fact, where <coughs> is it? It's here. <laughs> it's here. And we're going to show it in just a minute. We're going to get it, some of Pam's biscuits. Mm -hmm. <laughs> show it, not share it. That's right. We're going to get some of the jelly and some of your biscuits. And we're going to talk about if you do nothing but bake a little basket of bread mm -hmm. and take to your neighbor. Mm -hmm. Take to somebody who possibly, one of the things I, when I was a caregiver, being there 24-7 got very, very hard. Mm -hmm. If somebody would relieve me for an hour, mm -hmm. just one hour, it made such a difference. Because but then you have to live with the guilt of leaving for exactly, an hour. Exactly, exactly. Right. You know, because you want to stay positive that the person's going to make it and mm -hmm. live, mm -hmm. but then in the back of your mind when you leave, you're thinking, well, I'm leaving and they could pass on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, so you've mm -hmm. got constant turmoil inside of you. Right. Taking care of the person, then the guilt of, do I leave? Do, you know, you need time for yourself. Right. 
and but little, they need to take that break yeah practice. to get refreshed to, to bring to. back positive that's energy right. mm -hmm. that's you know right. if you just keep going and keep going mm -hmm. you get down and out you know right. go off and and just make mm -hmm. yourself get away and and, mm -hmm. and grab on some new strength right. you know right. one of the things we talked about with cancer stress is a big cancer thing now ronnie mm -hmm. was in the trucking business and the grading business a lot of stress there a lot of stress there and stress mm -hmm. is something we need to kind of keep down mm -hmm. i have learned this year to appreciate just little things mm -hmm. just little mm -hmm. things and um, I have a friend, Sue Taylor, who uh -uh, actually brought me some blue frog today, and it has actually given me some energy. I'd never tried it before. Now, you've had some, I've had some. It's got natural sugars in it, and it actually revitalizes you. Since you've been sick, I think it'd be good if you drank a little bit of this, and it boosts you a, a little bit, you know. Is it's got it, a lot uh, of good things in it. Harsh like a soda, or is it mild mm -hmm. like no, a juice? No, it's mild. It's mild okay. like a juice, yeah. So so to kick you up a little bit, but Sue has been instrumental in helping us raise money in yes, McCaseville. a lot of money yeah. for the meal. Right. <laughs> a lot of money, and, and that is, everybody can do a little something. Mm -hmm. A little something. Barbecue, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So today, Pam is going to introduce us to some new, easy things mm -hmm. that everybody can do. This, this one here is like a half a second. Yeah, it looks this like a race the, away thing. This is a cheating yeah. version of a seizure. Mm -hmm. The iceberg is kind of starting mm -hmm. to become obsolete. Yeah. So you can get it for nothing. It's mm -hmm. pennies. So you take your iceberg lettuce, core it, wedge it. They cut this wedge a little big, but mm -hmm. anyway. You wedge it, you lay it on the plate, you drizzle your dressing, mm -hmm. you sprinkle some bacon bits on the top. Is that a homemade dressing? Harm. No, it's not. Okay. <laughs> but you can make homemade seasoning okay. dressing. Okay. But that was just out of the bottle. Quick and easy, simple, save time. And this, this Would dressing. Would you show up dressing. with this as a meal for a caregiver? Well, my idea of what I would do, if you're trying to get in my mindset, mm -hmm. is I would have that caregiver come to my okay. Okay. house and I would host and have it all about her mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. beginning to end, you know. Mm -hmm. and a full tree. A full tree. Mm -hmm. That time away, relaxing, you know, and this is her <coughs> and first And really, thing. one hour. If you can just give them yeah. one hour. Yeah. 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 You know, and just wait on her, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. take care of it. And we're saying her. There's lots of guys oh, like yeah, that right. have done right. caregiving, mm -hmm. you know. But you want to leave them recharged. But this is the beginning step, the first small thing, mm -hmm. so that you can spend time sharing with your friend and talking and, and helping boost their spirits right. instead of fussing over a big old salad. You just cut your wedge off there and right. go That's for it. it. <laughs> and I think one of the things, did you find you needed somebody to talk to when Ronnie was sick? Oh, yeah. Yeah. You do. Mm -hmm. I and think then, that's... Really important. And you also need your time to yourself to mm -hmm. re-evaluate yourself because there's a lot of things going through your mind. That's right. Time. That's right. Mm -hmm. Well, we're going to take a break right now, and we're going to go to um, some great music. We have a lady here today who is doing, you're a little bit country, I'm a little bit rock and roll. I love the old country music. You <laughs> taught me about a lady, Miss Loretta Lynn, I've loved her forever. Connie Smith, I loved forever. Today we brought a lady in from Nashville who's going to sing a song once a day. Now, it's from a time period. How old are you? 49. Well, <laughs> <laughs> she's a sweet, sweet memory. Um, Fred Wyndham was amazing what I would give if he had not had to leave this world when he did, but that's what life is about. We lose people we love and um, hope, hope to goodness that there will be a day that um, heaven will open those gates and we'll all rejoice and be back with them. To look back today is a, a very special part of why it's so important to learn about today's technology. Video your grandparents, video your parents. I wish I had more interviews with Fred because he would always sit and tell me about all the different. He, he was above and beyond the technology and television and anything new and hot, he would get out there and he'd buy it and he'd say, you're gonna love what I came up with now. It's amazing to me that um, in the many years that I've done television, things change greatly. When we look back, the world has changed greatly. And I was going to read a little, a little something about what is happening in the world today, and it kind of makes me sad. Today we mourn the loss of justice in America. Today is a day that the, ro the um, ruling political party arrests its leading opponent for having committed no crime. As I will be out of commission for the next few hours, I want to take this opportunity to thank you for all your support. I am blown away by all the support and the prayers we have received. It's sad to see what's happening, not for myself, but for our country. Our nation is becoming a Marxist third world country that criminalize, criminalizes dissent and um, imprisons its political opponents. 
this is, it's, it's so scary in America today, and this is from President Donald John Trump, and um, it's, it's looking back at the world. We've gone through so much. I was at Martin Luther King's funeral. So many things in my life have changed. I remember John Kennedy's assassination, but I don't remember a day in America that was quite like today. So today, look back to the past, find something good to talk about, find something good to laugh about. Tomorrow is April the 5th, and it is the day that Loretta and Eddie welcomed their curly, black-haired little boy into the world. So um, we're going to show a couple of things right now, and then it's going to be time to leave y'all. But I want to share just a little bit of when things were fun, and there was a lot of laughter in the house. Oh, we're ready. We're standing over here arguing about the way you do Crisco. Now listen, you know, isn't that typical? Well, I wouldn't have thought you'd put that much. My well, goodness. You know, that's why I'm the cook and you're the helper. It, it certainly shouldn't stick, that's okay, for sure. Okay, now y'all, we have got white lily cornbread, cornmeal mix. And to this, I'm going to add an egg. There you go. There's my egg, big boy. Now, you want to talk a little bit about Crisco and why everybody needs to use Crisco? Because it'll make you proud every time it'll... you ask Loretta Lynn, she'll tell you. <laughs> okay, y'all, I'm putting a big old gallon of blue plate mayonnaise. There's my dollop of blue plate. And I use Mayfield milk. Y'all know that. You know, we got to do the Mayfield. Now, let's stir that bad boy up. Got to make Scotty proud. Huh? Got to make Scotty proud. This is egg, cornmeal mix, and blue plate mayonnaise. Now this is, go I'm getting tangled up in Rich Scott's. Now don't you do that. I guess they notice that we're at Rich's set. We are, and we'll trade you this recipe for any recipe you've got. So if y'all got, got some Crisco simple, simple my recipes. I can't get the bag <laughs> Oh, Lordy. Whoop. Now this is the texture of the cornbread mix so far. We have got egg. We've got egg, mayonnaise, cornmeal mix, and some milk. Now, here we go. I'm going to show you. Now, you want to eat a couple of these? No. Okay. Well, now, if it's this size, you don't have to break it up. But if it's the big ones, I just break it in half a couple of times. There you go. There you go. Now, this is just pork skins. And somebody likes a lot of them. And sometimes I'll make it and he'll say, how many did you put in there? I don't think you put enough. So I'm going to show you. I pretty much cut, I covered the top of the cornmeal. You reckon that's enough? Probably so. You can start out to see. If I but just make sure that if you do this, to not uh, crunch it. Yeah, because you don't want it to be pretty much just, yeah. Okay. I mean, I guess it'd be that okay that way if... Um, There's your texture. People that... Um, you know, has a hard time chewing, but these are pretty soft. They're oh, not nothing awesome. like crackling. No, no. Okay. The texture's not. Now, here's Aunt Louise's perfect little pan. There you go. Now, this will take about 20 minutes to cook, and we're going to go put it in the oven at 400 degrees. So, this will be ready in about 20 minutes at 400 degrees. This is a serving for two, and obviously, you can duplicate, you know, you can add, you can... Whatever you want to do to make enough for your family. But there you go. Cornmeal mix, an egg, blue plate mayonnaise, Mayfield milk, obviously. And then, and this is a dollar bag of cracklings from the dollar store. So, very simple. Is that pretty easy? Simple as that. Yum, yum, yum. Yep. Okay, we're going to take a break and go to the community calendar. And in about 20 minutes, we're going to taste this hot out of the oven cornbread. And it is so good to be back in Ella J, Georgia. That's right. Ain't it good to be back home again? Yeah, it is. But uh, <clears throat> I wanted him to sing that yeah. song so badly. There's a storm across the valley. Clouds are rolling in. The afternoon. On your shoulder There's a truck out on the four lane A mile or more away The whining of his wheels just makes it colder We're going to give you this great apple recipe, really easy. Peanut butter bread and apples, that's pretty simple. And I bet you, I bet you you're going to like it. 
Well, I don't think it'd be a good idea for me to try it on the set. I think you'd be I, may, I may have to leave the set. <laughs> no. Now, we're not going to say that we stayed up all night long and did these, right? But we will say you took the motor home under something that said 11 foot and the motor home's 12 feet. How yeah, did we do that? We wasn't sure we was going <laughs> to be getting our wings this morning. Hey, it's good to be back home. Sometimes this old barn feels like a long lost friend. Yes, and hey, it's good to be back home again. There's all And if you're wondering why I was a singing and a doing this, because <laughs> if you'll you if you'll watch Sherry, she'll just sit there and she'll she'll just Oh, is that what you're doing? You're I just rubbing it. your quilt. I love my okay. quilt. I love all my right. quilt, yes. And your mother called last Friday, sunshine made her cry. You felt the baby move just yesterday. Hey, it's good to be back home again. Sometimes. Uh, they might not appreciate that. <laughs> I don't know. Let's go down to some awesome music. Here we are, Matt Diamond. And we're going this time. We are. <laughs> All right, cut the camera off. Madeline. 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 Listen, I will say it's he's younger than me, and that's all <laughs> I'm going to say. Well, 58 younger than you. <laughs> Try it again. It's Madeline, not 58. <laughs> it's the sweetest thing I know of. Just spending time with you. It's the little thing that make a house a home. Like a fire softly burning. Supper on the stove. The light. My home's in ball ground, Georgia. No matter where I lay my head.